Hi everyone and welcome back to our crafting tutorial series. In this episode we're going to go over how to make it so we can pick up our items inside the world. Now currently we've got it set up uh, with our first, first person character having the inventory component. So what we're going to do is use that to add our items to inventory when we interact with them. Before we do that though we need to set up the ability to look at and also interact with these various items. To do this, we're going to use an interface. So I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint interface. And I'm going to call this one the interact interface. And I'm going to open it up and we're going to add two functions to this interface. The first function we're going to call look at. And the second function we're going to call interact with. Now both of these are going to require one input. So I'm going to go down and create a new input, and this is going to be called the player character. And the type for this is going to be whatever the actor type is of your play, main player character. So in this case, it is the first person character. And likewise, you can do that with the interact with as well. Like so. So the interface allows you to put generic uh, functions, these two generic functions onto another object and multiple objects at that. And it makes it so you can then call what we call a message out to these uh, functions. And if it has this interface, the functions will run. But if it doesn't have the interface, it's not going to give you an error or anything like that. So it's really quite cool to use. So we're going to apply that now to our item parent. With item parent open, go to class settings, on the right hand side you'll see a section called interfaces. Here we can add our interact interface. Hit compile and save. We can close that and just double check it should have brought it forward onto your child one as well. So my item green leaf, I'm going to go to class settings and you can see here inherited interfaces interact interface. So that's all good. We can close that we can carry on. The next thing we need to set up is the ability to use a key on our keyboard to interact with something. So I'm going to go to Edit, Project Settings, and choose the Input option on the left hand side. Inside your action mappings, we're going to add a new action mapping. I'm going to call this Interact. And we're going to give it a key of the E key. So when we push E, it's going to uh, call this Interact uh, action event. We can close down the project settings and go back to our player character. So on the player character is where we're going to set up the ability to look at items and then if we are looking at it when we interact, we want to make it interact with that item. So in here, we're going to use that uh, function that we just made. That interact action event. So this is going to be called when you push E. And we're also going to have a tick event. The tick event is going to be used to check all the time what we're looking at. So we need to use this every single frame because we need to constantly update what we're looking at. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new function. So create a new function and we're going to call this one check look at. And this function is going to uh, handle a line trace out from the player's camera point of view and report back what it's uh, seeing. And if it's something that it can interact with, then we're going to give it that interact um, message. So as I said, we're going to use a line trace. So I'm going to come out of here and do a line trace by channel. Now we're going to set up the start and end point for this. And that's going to come from our camera. So drag your camera component out. And then from there, we need to get its world location. And that'll be its start. And we also need to get its rotation. Because we need to figure out which way it's facing. So we get its rotation, and then we get the forward vector from that rotation. The forward vector gives us the direction that we're looking at. What's that? We need to multiply this by a value. And the reason why we do that is because a forward vector is normalized, meaning that the value is between 0 and 1. Therefore, we need to multiply it by how far away we want it to look. So if I change this to 300, it's now going to look 300 units away. 
We need to offset this by the start position. So drag your start position out as well and add a new vector to it. And that vector will be added together like so to get our end point. This is a pretty standard setup for any kind of line trace coming out from the player. So we're using it by channel. So trace channel, visibility or camera are the two default options you get with Unreal. We're going to create our own channel. And basically what that means it's going to react differently based on the channel that we're casting through. So to do a new channel, we're going to go into our project settings and in the details, search details box, just search for the word channel. And if you scroll down, you'll find the option for trace channels and it should be blank because you've not made any yet. Go new trace channel and we're going to call it interactive. And the default response for this is going to be overlap. Click accept and we now added our own custom trace channel to the uh, game. Now the default response is going to be overlap because we don't want everything to be interactive That's at, by default. By default this is going to overlap it and ignore it. So by default overlap is what you want. Now we're going to go into our items, uh, item parent, and we're going to go on and select what channel it's going to be response, uh, it's going to respond to. Now for this, I'm going to actually create a sphere collision rather than using the mesh because sometimes the mesh won't have any collision on it, which is fine. We want it just to be a sphere and we may want to change what we have to look at to interact with the item. So this sphere, uh, you, don't, you don't want it to be a parent or anything or a child or anything, you just want it to be separate. And with it selected, scroll down to the collision area and you should see, if you don't see it already, expand open your collision presets. It should say interactives in the trace responses. It's grayed out because it's not custom. We need to change it to custom. So where it says overlap all dynamic, change this to custom. And now you can change interactives here to block. That means anything that's using that channel for tracing will ret return a block and a hit result. Hit save and we can close that. Now because that's on the parent, it will filter through to your other ones as well. Double check, go to your item, uh, sub item and go to sphere. And just scroll down, you should see interactives is set to block. That's all good. So next thing we're going to do is go into our player character again. And continue with our line trace, but changing the trace channel now to that interactives channel. Hit compile. So now this line trace is only going to return out hits when it hits a interactive, uh, something that's been set to block the interactive channel. So the out hit data, we're going to right click on that and split it to see all the various data points we get from it. We're going to do, uh, first of all, check whether or not we actually hit something. So we're going to do blocking hit into a branch. And if it's true, we're going to store what hit actor we just hit. So drag out hit actor here and promote to variable. And we'll plug that into true. We're going to name it, look at target. And from there, we can then call our look at message. It requires a player character, which is this current actor we're in. So we can just use self, like so. If we're not looking at anything that's blocking hit, what we want to do is clear this variable. So we're going to drag look out target out and choose set, plug in intervals and leave it blank. That'll clear this variable from any value. We can hit compile and we can close that down. Now on your event tick, we're going to drag that function out onto it and plug that in. So it's constantly looking for what's in front of it. So when we push the interact key, we want to use this lookout target, which we use get. And then from there, we're going to do the interact with message. Again, requires a player character which we use self. Hit compile. And now to test this out, what we're going to do is go onto our bush um, item. And I'm going to just sort out the sphere so it is of decent size and position. There we are. And then on the event graph, we're going to use the interact with function. And we're going to right click and just search for interact with and you should see the event interact with. And from here, 
um, we're going to first of all right click and add a call to parent function because we may put code onto our parent later on we want to make sure that that works the same there and with the interact function here no we won't do it on the parent don't we Ooh. next we're going to go onto the item parent and we're going to put some generic code in for our event graph here we're going to use the interact with function or event rather and from here we're going to basically do a print string of the name of the item so I'm going to drag out that name variable that we made previously drag it out and hit compile and that's it so now if I go back and push play I can push E and I can see the name of the item I'm looking at and interacting with so now we want to add that to our inventory so quite simply all we're going to do is go to our item parent and we're going to rather than do print string we use the player character here to get the inventory component and then from there we can use the add to inventory function we made previously this is going to require an item and a quantity now the item is going to come from this current uh, object that we're interacting with so we can use the self and then from there get class that will go into item to be added and the quantity in this case just going to be one hit compile and oh wait sorry once we add it to inventory we then want to destroy actor compile and now test it out so when I interact with it it disappears because it's gone into my inventory now currently we can't see in our inventory because we haven't done any user interface for it so that's what we're going to do in the next episode if you want to watch that in the next episode right now head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan where a donation of just one dollar will get access to that video plus many many others big shout out and thank you to all of my patrons and my youtube members for their continued support this wouldn't be possible without you guys so big thank you to all of you don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like and comment on this video if you have any questions. Thanks everyone and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.